Hello there newbies and welcome to episode 3 of the Newbie Muso Show. Now just a wee quick word before we begin this episode. I have a series of music blogs and you can listen to them or you can read them on www.medium.com. You can also visit me on Twitter at the Newbie Musel Show or Snapchat or Facebook. Okay? Now, this episode we'll be looking at acoustic drum kits. Now, in episode 2 we looked at buying electronic kits and this episode we'll be um, particularly specialising in should you buy an acoustic drum kit. What are the pros and the cons? So I'll see you soon. Now as you can see here folks from this display these are the top brands that most people go for if they have the money but there's a ton of other makers too. Okay we just saw a range here of the very top brands the most popular Mapex, Sona, Yamaha, DW, there's also Gretz, there's Slingerland, there's a whole ton of companies. But you don't need to go buying the top kits because you are a newbie. So, what kind of kit should you buy? Well, online and in a lot of your physical music stores, it's a case of checking them out and doing your homework, seeing what you can afford, basically, because cash is always king. And unless you've got rich parents to buy you what you want to buy, then you're going to be forced to go for what we call entry-level drum kits. The good thing is, you can pick these up easily for a couple of hundred quid, okay? And that's cheap in American dollars, euros and British pounds as well. You can even, as I say, I keep mentioning this all the time, check the local newspapers, there's always free kits going second-hand kits going for a song. You see, the thing is, unlike guitars, if you buy a good expensive guitar, it goes up in value, it appreciates. If you buy a really expensive drum kit, it goes down in value and it depreciates. So if you spent, say, just for talking sake, a couple of grand on a really big top of the range kit, Six months time it's probably lost half its value because drums just don't hold their value. So there's no point in, unless you're a professional making a lot of money, in spending stupid amounts of money on drums. So let's talk about a cheap acoustic kit. You decide when you have a look at them what you like, okay? Drum kits like guitars, there's always aesthetics, you know, it's, it's the way the kit looks. Do you like the colour of the kit? Do you like the finish? You know, is it sparkle? Is it shimmer? Is it wave? What is it? Is it hammer beaten or whatever it, it is, you know, that you'll find out that something catches your eye out of a range of kits. But then there's a lot of things to consider. So let's have a wee look at these. Point one. Drum kits come in lots of different sizes ranging from different sizes of bass drums to different sizes of what we call mounted toms. These are the, the tom toms that are on a stand in the bass drum. There's a kind of holder on the top of the bass drum and that holds these. So we call these mounted toms because they're mounted on the bass drum. Now you Americans call it the kick drum because you kick it. We call it a bass drum, okay? And then you've got the floor tom, or the floor tom-tom. And it stands in three legs, it stands alone on the floor. And it can be anything from 12 to 14 to 16 to, you know, 18 by 18. That was as big as I had. I had a 16 by 16 and 18 by 18, but I had a really big kit then. So anyway, snare drums generally tend to be 14 by 5.5, okay? 
that's the kind of general depth, the five and a half is the depth of the, the, the drum and 14 inches across, okay? And so if you want a big sound bass drums, old bass drums, they can start at 18 inches, 20 inches, 22 and 24. I've even seen a 26 inch bass drum, but that's big huge things like the old time bands had. Nowadays, most drummers start with either a 20 or a 22 inch, that's the kind of standard size. Okay, what the f is drum hardware, I hear you ask? Well, in a nutshell, drum hardware is the stands that come with a drum kit. The drums are the drums and the stands are the hardware, okay? You'll have tom-tom holders, you'll have the legs for your floor tom, you'll have a snare drum stand, a hi-hat stand and cymbal stands. That's basically, and of course the foot pedal, okay, or the kick pedal as you Americans call it. That's your hardware, basically, okay? Now, I bought a drum kit from Toman in Germany. They, they have a UK store, but it's delivered from Germany because it has a dot .de, Deutsch, Germany. Um, suffix after a kind of file, I can't mind the file thingy bobby thing. And um, so I got my kit delivered from Germany, it was just a cheap kit. It was called a Starcaster, okay? And when it came, it was alright. It wasn't fantastic, but it was okay. But, Toman! The stands that came with it and the hardware were absolute crap. Big style. Because these were stands that looked as if I played them 40 odd years ago when I first started playing drums. I mean they were so thin and skinny and weak. So if you're going to buy a drum kit, make sure you get really strong, double braced hardware. Not so much in the tom legs and the bass drum pedal, that's by the by. But if you're getting a, a hi-hat stand, make sure it's nice and sturdy and chunky. Make sure your snare drum stand is chunky and sturdy and likewise with the cymbal stands because you don't want these skinny little things that could blow over easily or knock over or whatever. You want something that's going to stand firm, okay? So that's what drum hardware is. And now let's take a little look at cymbals. Hello, we're back looking at cymbals. Now, there are loads of different ranges of cymbals from the days that I started. When I started in Britain, actually in Scotland, um, there was two big makes and one was paste or paeste or pasty or whatever the hell you want to call it and zildjian. Paste was Swiss made and zildjian was Turkish made and um, later on the zildjian brothers had a little bit of a falling out and one brother hopped it and started Sabian and now there's an absolute plethora of cymbal companies which is good for drummers basically because it means that you've not got the big two dominating the market and the prices it means that these other smaller companies can give these big boys a run for their money and it's better for our pockets so nowadays you've got um, dream symbols You've got, um, what's the other one? Um, um, scratch that, scratch that. Let's get back to symbols. When I started off, uh, there was a company called Premier Drums and it's one of Britain's leading drum manufacturers and makes good quality drums, good quality hardware, blah, blah. Okay, 
And they made a range of their own symbols called Zin, Z-Y-N, Zin symbols. They had ordinary Zin and they had Super Zin. And I was luckily enough, uh, lucky, lucky, uh, I was lucky enough to get a pair of Super Zins for my kit. And they were great sounding symbols at a really very cheap price. However, when I started off, I had this huge big ride symbol. And it was by a company called Crut. K-R-U-T and it was really, they should have called it crud or crap because it was a real bin lid, this thing. When you hit it, instead of going like a symbol should, it just went clang like a lump of metal, you know, well, well, which it was a lump of metal, but it, it was a horrible symbol. And later on, of course, I uh, played with different kinds of cheaper symbols and then Ta -da! came the day that I was able to afford to buy paste 2002 symbols and I had a whole range of symbols on my drum kit. I had um, sound edge hi-hats which were scalloped like the sea, the seashell things, the scalloped seashells and they were really loud. I mean these things let the air out and they carried right across big halls these things. They were so rude, so loud. And I had a 10 inch splash. I had a 16, 18 inch crash, uh, sorry, a 14 and 16 inch crash, an 18 inch crash ride, and a big 20 inch dark ride with a big heavy bell on it, which was good for belling. Not belly ends, belling, okay? So, Let's talk about the kind of symbols that you can get which are within your price range. Most symbol manufacturers, including the cheaper ones as well as the expensive ones, will offer you symbol packs which usually have hi-hats, a splash symbol and a crash symbol. However, if you want to build up a full range, then just check out the prices. You'll also need to look at harder soft cases for your drums or a symbol bag as well. Well folks, we're almost in the last part of the episode here. The last thing to talk about is practicing, okay? We're going to look at sticks in a minute. Make sure that if you're in a house you get permission from the neighbours to do a bit of practice, otherwise your life will be misery, trust me. Um, or the other alternative is to get yourself a drum pad, a practice pad it's called, and it's just a piece of rubber and you can practice all your chops on that, okay, and, and you won't bother anybody. Right, let's have a look at stick bags. This is a stick bag here, it's got a zipper. You can see that it's got a full range of sticks in it. Let's have a look at some of them here. Here's two different sticks here. This is a, a 7AN. Have a look at the tips. Can you see the difference there? One's a finer tip than the other and they're both nylon tipped. I like nylon tipped sticks because they don't wear away the wood so quick, especially when you're playing a lot of cymbals. They tend to preserve uh, the tip much better. Okay. And I think personally, if as long as you're not battering, if you're not playing heavy metal that's going to blow folks heads off, I think the island tips are much better. Um, some drummers like to turn them around and play with the butt. This is known as the butt and these are the tips here. These are both Vic Firth sticks. However, when I was on the go I used to play with Promark sticks and I still think that Pro Mark sticks are the best in the planet. Right, what else do you need? You might need a pair of um, soft beaters like these. These are originally orchestral timpani type sticks. But if you want to do a nice, what we call a cymbal swish, where you're starting off with a diminuendo, going to a crescendo quick like a shh, like that. These are the kind of things that you need. You can't use ordinary sticks because you would hear the tips of the sticks rattling off the edge. Whereas these here, you'll hear the swish 
but you won't hear the part of the sticks that's hitting it. So that's those there. Let's have a look at these. This oh pearl, I've just noticed pearl. These are called retractable brushes because you can actually bring them in and retract them there. You see, you put them out and you can retract them. Uh, these are great if you're doing a uh, country or if you're doing something softer and you don't want that thwack of a stick on the snare drum, you would use a wire brush like this, okay? Some brush sticks are made in island and they're fluorescent coloured. You get red, you get red, orange, green, yellow, kind of day glow colours. Personally, I'm a bit of a dinosaur and a traditionalist. I prefer the wire brushes. I still think with a coated batter head, you'll get a better... Um, I don't know what you would call that, it's a kind of sweep thing, a kind of sweep as you sweep round the drum, you know, and you get a better kind of sound where the, the brush is hitting the plastic head of the drum and you get that lovely shh type of sound whenever the brush is doing it. Retractable, look, pull it in. The good thing about retractable brushes is you can use them at full spread, you can pull them in a wee bit, if you want more control, you can do a wee bit more if you want less control and then finally up there for using your brushing techniques, okay? Right, that concludes our episode 3 all about drums. Obviously I don't have a drum shop, I haven't got kits to show you or symbols to show you and stuff like that. It's just my little backroom studio here. But what I do have to share with you is a wealth of knowledge and experience. And again, you'll find your own thing once you start to check out cymbals and drums and hardware and all sorts of stuff, sticks, different types of sticks. You'll find the kind of sticks that suit you. One last thing I'd say about sticks is if, um, if you're a kind of a, a kinda light person, don't get big, big, heavy sticks because you'll find that they impede your subtlety. I would start off personally with a set of lightweight sticks, okay? And work on your practice of your rolls, your paradiddles, your flams, your roughs, all these different kinds of rudiments of drums, as they call them, on the practice pad. And then when you get better and get used to holding the sticks, you can gradually increase the weight. But when you're going for a stick, for instance, these are probably ideal for me because they feel quite lightweight, they're not too heavy, they feel quite balanced in the hand. Now I've noticed a lot of drummers, they're holding a the stick like this and that's wrong. You should never be holding your sticks like that, okay? The stick should always have maybe a wee inch and a half or so sticking out at the butt end there so that you can use them. You see that look? But if you're playing them like this, you've not got a lot of control if you're holding them up at the ends. You need that wee bit of control, okay? That's my advice to you, so happy hunting with acoustic drums. I hope you've enjoyed this series here, um, episode 3 in acoustic drums. One last thing to ask is please comment on the episode Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button please for more videos and please remember to share this to other social media platforms. I look forward to your comments and I'll see you all in episode 4. Episode 4, yep, see you then, bye. Yubi Muzo Show